Welcome everyone. We wanted to give you a warm welcome. If it's your first time with us here at the Cornerstone, we are so glad that you can make it here today with us. And we hope that this is just only the beginning of a relationship that we have with you as a church family. Uh, we are actually located right now in Independence High School, Sundays at 1030. So please come on out and see us in our natural element. But today we're at the park. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has made. And most importantly, we celebrate our risen King. Amen? Amen. So let's open a prayer this morning. I'm just going to share a real short message this morning. But God, we honor you. And three words changes everything. He is risen. Just those three words bring us hope. Not just for this life, but for eternity, God. It gives us hope, freedom, forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. And this morning, as we celebrate the risen King, we pray, Lord, that your spirit would just fill this place with your love and your grace this morning, that everyone would understand the price that was paid for all of humanity and the victory that was won on the third day. God, we honor you. We give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles with me or your phones, you can open up with Luke chapter 24. And we're going to read Luke 24, verse 1 to 6. And it says, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Why do you seek the living among the dead? A question that is still relevant to us today. Why do we seek the living among the dead? Why do we seek life in things that lead to death? Why do we seek fulfillment in brokenness? Why do we seek peace in chaos? Why do we seek contentment in disappointments? Why do we seek acceptance from rejection? Why do we seek direction from the lost? Why do we seek life from the world when all it can offer is a six foot hole in the ground? There's no fountain of youth. Science can prolong our life, but it can't do anything about death. Plastic surgeons can make us look good, but it can't do anything about death. You and I and everybody we know, one day will die. That's the harsh reality of life. And even more shocking is when death comes, comes separation and comes eternal consequence. But why do we seek life elsewhere? Why do we seek hope in all the wrong places? Why do we seek hope in money and material things? Why do we seek hope in power and fame and affirmation? Why do we seek the living among the dead things? But this same question also contains a promise for those who believe in Christ. Jesus is no longer dead. He is alive. Jesus died to forgive our sins. Jesus died to pay our price. Jesus died to bring life and bring it abundantly. This gives us reason to celebrate. We have real hope. A real everlasting hope that the world cannot offer. So why do we seek the living among the dead? He is not there, but He is risen. 
We can have everything He promised if we believe in His name. How many of you go shopping at Costco? I go to Costco maybe uh, every couple weeks. And I remember my first time going to Costco years ago. I remember I had my card, I paid for my stuff, and, and I walked up to this line to the door and waiting to exit Costco. And there's two people standing at the door, right? And they're checking the receipt, making sure that you have everything that is right in your shopping cart. But if you don't have a receipt, you can't get out. You can't get out with the stuff that you have unless you have the receipt. I remember my first time going to Costco. I put the receipt in my pocket. I walked to the front and I said, oh, where's my receipt? And I was looking at the line, long line behind me. And they're like, oh, come on, man, where's your receipt? You got to have your receipt out, ready to go. And looking for my receipt, I didn't have the confidence going to this exit when people were checking it off. But now when I go to Costco, right after I check out, I keep that receipt in my hands right here. This is all the, the picnic stuff that we bought today from Costco. But now when I go to Costco and I check out, I keep that receipt in my hand. Even if I'm holding those Polish dogs, even if I'm holding that pizza, right? Because on your way, yeah, you pick up your food and stuff. But I hold that receipt tight. And when I go to the line, I have this confidence like, yeah, this stuff is paid for, right? I got my proof right here. Here's a receipt. And when you walk up, they look at the stuff and they mark it. They put a mark on it that it's been paid for. If they really like you, they put a heart. If they have a kid with you, they put a happy face. Listen, people. When Christ died on the cross for you and I, your price was paid. Your price was paid. The debt that we owed. We owed a debt we couldn't pay. And he paid a debt he didn't owe because he loves you and I so much that he would send his only begotten son to suffer and die on the cross to give us life, not just on this earth, but for eternity. Can I get an amen? amen. Our debt has been fully paid. And let me tell you something. This cross, the cross that he died on is your receipt. And his resurrection on the third day is your exit, is your escape from death. If you believe in his name, you can have that same confidence this morning. Look, God forbid, I don't know when my life is going to end. It could end today, it could end tomorrow. But when it ends, are you going to have the confidence that you have Christ in your heart? That when death comes a knocking, you can say, death, do not be proud in the presence of a child of God. Because my debt has been paid. And that cross is my receipt. And that empty tomb is my exit. It says in Romans 10, 9, that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord, you will be saved. You don't have to earn salvation. You don't have to work your way towards salvation. It says in Romans 10, 9, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord, you will be saved. You can know right now that you're sealed. You can know right now that when this life ends, you'll be in eternity with him. With all heads bowed down this morning and eyes closed. If you're saying, Pastor Paul, I want that confidence. I want to know that when my life ends, that I'll be right there next to Jesus in paradise with him. Maybe he tried it all. Maybe he tried everything the world has to offer and you realize that it 
leaves you empty. Even our early relationships, they still leave us a void that cannot save us. But there is one who paid that price. And his name is Jesus. So this morning, if you're saying, Pastor Paul, I want to believe in Jesus. I want him to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to live my life knowing that I have a purpose. That when I'm in my workplace, when I'm in my school, when I'm in my community, I know that I am anchored by something that is beyond this world. Maybe some of you are going through something physically or emotionally or relationally. Maybe you're looking for hope. I tell you, Jesus is the answer to our emptiness this morning. Now this morning, if you want to make that commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, between you and God, just raise your hand this morning. Just raise your hand. Thank you for those hands this morning. Let's all stand and we're going to pray together. God's love knows no bounds. And the cross was for all of the world to have that opportunity to believe. And this morning, let's pray this prayer from the bottom of our heart to the Lord. And repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and that the wages of my sin is death. But because of your great love for me, you died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sin. But on the third day, you rose again, conquering death and opening the door to eternal life for those who believe. Today, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you are Lord of all. I receive you now as my Savior and thank you for the gift of forgiveness, of salvation, and eternal life. In Jesus' most precious name, in Jesus' most precious name. In Jesus' most precious name. And all of his children said, Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. If you pray that prayer, we want to welcome you to the family of faith that goes around the globe today. There's salvation that is happening all around the world, different countries, different places. And if you made that commitment today, we want to welcome you. And if you don't have a church yet, get connected to a Bible-believing church. We have some connect cards that we would love for you to fill out so to, to know a little bit more about you. But come visit us on Sundays at 1030. If you have a church already, great. Continue to commit to that church. Continue to serve in that church. But if you don't have a home church, please come and visit. Because we can build life together. Amen.